is the Alabama A&M Basketball Review. 30 minutes of highlights, analysis, and features of Alabama A&M Bulldog Basketball. The Alabama A&M Basketball Review is brought to you by Arm Software, Buffalo Wild Wings at Madison Square Mall, Woody Anderson Ford, The Fellowship of Faith Church, Tellini's Italiano, 90.9 WJAB, Five Guys, Aramark, Union Hill Primitive Baptist Church, and Wings to Go. And now, with Coach Willie Hayes, here's your host, Reggie Benson. Hello and welcome to the Alabama A&M Basketball Review. I'm your host, Reggie Benson, along with men's basketball coach Willie Hayes. The Bulldogs are coming off a difficult loss to Alabama State. Coach, you look at the season so far in terms of the league, two very, very close losses really could be undefeated in the league. Yes, you know, those two games that we lost by three points and just the luck of the bounce of the ball, you know, we could be 5-0. and oh. But those were two opportunities that we let slip away from us and we just got to make those up. Now you got to turn around and uh, even though you got a home stand this weekend, you got to turn around and go on the road and get a couple of those games back though. That's what you got to do. You got to win your home games and then at least try to split on the road. Uh, we've got two tough games coming up with Southern and Alcorn, uh, starting with Southern today and then Alcorn on Monday. Then you got to go out to Texas and Prairie View and Texas Southern. Really, uh, we talked about this four game stretch. This is really kind of a championship caliber stretch when you talk about these four teams you can ready to play. Yeah, that's, uh, this is the meat of your schedule. You know, it started really back with Pine Bluff and then, you know, Alabama State, then you playing Southern. Alcorn, Texas Southern, Prairie View. So this is where you really find out where you are. And, uh, you know, we're playing well right now. A lot of people didn't expect us because we lost so much, but the guys are playing well. Like you said, we had opportunity to be really 5-0, and but, you know, just uh, with circumstances, we didn't uh, really execute down the stretch of the Alabama State game. It didn't cost us the game. The schedule really turns, though, after this weekend as well. I mean, seven out of your last 11 on the road. That's a tall order for any team. That, that's the tall order, Reggie, but I watched this team. It seems that we play better on the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, we need to just take care of this home stands and then just, you know, see what happened on the road. Give us the health of your team. I know that uh, Nick left the Alabama State game with a little ankle injury. Yeah, we're not sure about Nick right now. Uh, it's going to be a game time decision. Uh, you know, this, this game is about is uh, next person step up. Uh, you know, we lost Nick with the last four minutes of that game. I think if he'd have been there, it would have been a different outcome. But, you know, guys played well. I was pleased with the way they played. But, you know, that's the only injury we have right now. And, you know, uh, Ladarius Tab have a little ankle sprain, but he's able to play on his. Uh, look, it doesn't get any bigger. I mean, this is a big home stand. Your team's got to be ready to play regardless of what, what's going on, you know, outside. You know? Regardless of what's going on, you know, this team and I talked to them, though, know, we got to move forward. We, we got to execute. We got to do what we, uh, that we've been doing all year since, uh, since August. Got to continue to do it. And that's what, you know, people want us to do. And we got to continue to do that. Have you seen a sense of urgency about this team perhaps this week? Uh, you know, practice has been kind of scarce this week. But um, the, the practice that we have had, there's been a lot of energy, a lot of effort, and that's all you want. Win, lose, or draw. If you go out and you give 100%, you know, you can live with that. We need the fans to be in here tonight, though. Yeah, we definitely need them. Uh, Southern is a good team, uh, playing well right now. They got, you know, some big-time transfer from Texas A&M and I think from, uh, one from Florida State. So uh, it's a tough game. We just got to be ready for it. Sure. When we come back, we'll talk more about the Alabama State game. Thanks for watching the Alabama A&M Basketball Review. Brandon lights up the court every game. Soon, he'll do it as an electrical engineer. Jordan specializes in logistics and supply chain management on and off the field. Ashley's been schooling players at the net and student teaching in the classroom. Alabama A&M, four years of artistic, academic, and athletic discovery. We deliver the full university experience. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Welcome to the Union Hill Primitive Baptist Church, where we believe that our God-given vision is to be determined and steadfast in our commitment to proclaiming the Word of God. Join us on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. for morning worship, and take advantage of our weekly Bible study options with studies on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m., Wednesdays at 12 p.m., or Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Once again, we welcome you to Union Hill Primitive Baptist Church, where our mission is proclaiming the gospel to the lost world producing mature disciples, and providing for the non-spiritual needs of the people. 90.9 WJAB-FM Huntsville. 100,000 watts, 24 hours a day. Smooth jazz and cool vocals. And the home of mellow madness till midnight. You bring me 
90.9 WJAB from the campus of Alabama A&M University. Welcome back to the Alabama A&M Basketball Review. The Bulldogs are coming off a disappointing loss to Alabama State. Coach, a game that we had, could have won, should have won. You know, that should have, could have, would have stuff doesn't work all the time. Right? No, it doesn't work all the time. But Reg, I was pleased with our guys played. Uh, you playing the, the number one seeded team that was picked to win your conference, and you, you play them neck to neck. Uh, our guys, they came out, uh, they played good from the beginning. Uh, we had a couple, you know, mistakes uh, right there going into the halftime because uh, we had a good little lead there and they made a run and that's what the game was about you know making runs and you know you just gotta who can withstand the runs at, uh, when they had them runs up 23 15 uh, about five minutes to go in the half they make a little run to get it to three uh, take me through halftime and the adjustments that you guys talk about making well you know uh, we were playing well uh, on our you know, half court our execution was well in the first half uh, and i think they realized that uh, in the half court game, they, they couldn't uh, stop uh, Ladarius Tab and Nicholas West. And, you know, we had Justin Carver and Tyler Davis hit some shots for us. And, you know, we had Byron Houston and, and uh, uh, Mike Hutchinson playing well for us. Uh, really, we was more concerned about their interior game, but I think we did a great job of uh, Big Wendell Lewis, uh, who's uh, a transfer from uh, Mississippi State. Okay. So we did a great job on him, but we just didn't close out that first half the way we should have closed out. We had a couple of turnovers, and that's something that we're going to have to really work on, uh, those turnovers. You're up 23-15 after uh, Marcus Merrill made a shot. Uh, they go 10-5, and they closed in 28-25, to and really kind of makes it a game going into the second half. They made it a game that, that, uh, right before the half. Uh, and, you know, every coach in America do the same thing. The first two minutes of the game, the first two minutes before half, the first two after half, and the last two minutes of the game. Yeah. And uh, they won those, those uh, last two minutes of the half and last two minutes of the game. We did the first two minutes of the game and the first two minutes of the second half, but you know you need those other four minutes at the big, uh, right before halftime and at the end of the game. The game stays nip and tuck much of the second half, and you're down two with about three plus minutes to go, and you only score three points the rest of the way, which really, really kind of hurts you going down. Yeah, we, uh, we went on a run there. We, uh, I think we got our biggest lead up to about eight points, and the guys were playing well, but uh, Lou Jack came up with it, you know, they have the uh, full court press and, you know, we normally don't falter on the pressure because I, I feel comfortable with Rakeel and them handling the ball and I just think, you know, that was just one of his worst games. You know, a kid yeah. like that, a sophomore, uh, it's tough to take the ball for. I just think he wasn't feeling comfortable with that game for whatever reason yeah. and, you know, he turned the ball over a couple of times it just wasn't on him. Yeah. You know, when you got a point guard, you also got to have guys to come back and meet the ball sure. mm -hmm. and we, we didn't do that. We left him back there by himself and, that's something that we have worked on, you know. Yeah, we all of us feel comfortable with Rakia with the ball. We know he can handle it. Mm -hmm. But when they send in two and three people at him, someone else got to come get that ball. You guys have been really good in league play and protecting the ball. You look at that box score, and that's probably the, the stat that looks uh, looks the worst, 21 that was, turnovers. That was the worst. That's probably the most turnover we've had all year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just happened to be at the wrong time against your arch rival, uh, against a, a packed crowd. And, you know, I, I look back at that game, and I looked at it, and I said, you know what? That's basically uh, Rakeel and Marcus May were the first time in a game of that magnitude sure. with that type of crowd right. playing against Alabama State. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it may have routed them for a minute, yeah. but, you know, for us to be able to have that many turnovers and you only down one point right. with opportunity to take the lead, uh, you know, I can deal with that. We just got to work on our execution toward the end of the game. Yeah, the, take me through now. I mean, Marcus had some shots late to kind of right. get you guys over the top, you know, right. and, and win the game, but just wouldn't go down. Just wouldn't go down, perfect opportunities. Uh, he got, he made some shots to keep us close, sure. you know. Uh, we decided to to give Rakeel a break. He was struggling that game, just wasn't his game, but that shows a lot about your team and Marcus Merriweather for them to, to stay in the game, to keep the game like the way it was and still give us a chance to win at the end. Uh, Marcus had some opportunities. I, that was a, a five second call there, you know, I wasn't yeah. too pleased with, you know, in right. a game of that magnitude with 22 seconds left in the game, mm -hmm. you know. To me, it's hard to make that call, but you know, that's what the call was, and we had to bounce back from that, and we did. Yeah. Uh, they got the ball back. We had a great defensive stance yeah. and mm -hmm. got the ball back, and still had another opportunity at it, right. and uh, came up with a play to execute. We was gonna do a ball screen and let uh, Ladarius Tab slip it, but for some whatever reason, we didn't we didn't get to that point, and we ended up turning the ball over. You look at it. Tab has a double double, twenty and ten. Uh, Nick goes out. Nick only has seven. That, right. And you, you talked about that a little bit earlier. Him being out of the game, which creates, creates some situations for your offense, really hurts you. 
Yeah, that, that hurt us with Nick going down with four minutes left in the game because we I think we were leading or it was tied because, like I said, it was going back and forth the whole game. But when Nick went down with four minutes in the game, you know, that kind of took away that go inside to person mm -hmm. and made you play more on the perimeter. And we just got to get more guys on the interior to step up if Nick goes out like that. And right now, uh, we're not sure about him for Saturday, uh, for today rather, but, you know, that hurt us going down the stretch with him being out. Um, we had to do uh, try a little something different and it didn't work for us. Another thing, didn't get to the free throw line much. Six out of third, didn't, when you got there, didn't make them. Six out of 13 from the foul line. Right, you know, <laughs> it was just one of them games, Reggie. Yeah. You know, you, you, and everybody know, you, your best free throw shoot on the line, and, and it shouldn't have came down to him, had to shoot two free throws that late in the yeah. game, but he's shooting on 85%, 88% right. from exactly. the free throw line, and, right. and we can't get him to go down, and you still get an opportunity at the end of the game. You know, like I told him after the game, Marcus, you're our best free throw shooter. If it comes up again, I'll still put you on that line because yeah. I know eventually you're going to knock them down for us. No doubt, no doubt, exactly. Uh, when we come back, we'll speak with Alabama A&M women's basketball coach Samika Randall. Thanks for watching the Alabama A&M Basketball Review. Brandon lights up the court every game. Soon, he'll do it as an electrical engineer. Jordan specializes in logistics and supply chain management on and off the field. Ashley's been schooling players at the net and student teaching in the classroom. Alabama A&M, four years of artistic, academic, and athletic discovery. We deliver the full university experience. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. 90.9 WJAB-FM Huntsville. 100,000 watts, 24 hours a day. Smooth jazz and cool vocals. And the home of Mellow Madness till midnight. You bring me joy. 90.9 WJAB. From the campus of Alabama A&M University. Brandon lights up the court every game. Soon, he'll do it as an electrical engineer. Jordan specializes in logistics and supply chain management on and off the field. Ashley's been schooling players at the net and student teaching in the classroom. Alabama A&M, four years of artistic, academic, and athletic discovery. We deliver the full university experience. Alabama A&M University, start here, go anywhere. Hello, I am Pastor Troy. There are a lot of people hurting, hurting emotionally, hurting physically, hurting financially, family hurting, hurting spiritually, and there is no hurt like church hurt. If you are hurting, I got a prescription for you. Psalm 147 and 3 says, He healeth the broken in heart and binds up their wounds. If you are hurting, come to the Fellowship of Faith Church and experience the healing of Jesus. Joining me now is Alabama A&M women's basketball coach Tamika Randall. The Bulldogs coming off a big 59-50 victory over arch rival Alabama State. Coach, congratulations, your first win over the Hornets after two very, very lopsided losses last year. I say it feels good. Uh, Reggie, you were along on a journey and uh, was, it was difficult coming up here and just, uh, just talking about uh, how we play. So I'm really, really ecstatic how our, our girls went out and played a, a well-balanced basketball game. We played from start to finish. Perhaps your best effort over a 40 minutes period in league play? Absolutely. Uh, just a great focus. Uh, and shoot around, you just saw that they were just locked into everything, kind of quiet, a little unusual. But when they stepped out on that floor, they were ready to play, and they played with a great uh, amount of energy. You've got some, uh, some girls that have some roots down in that area down at Bama State. It's Taylor Sibley from Montgomery came up big off the bench for you. She was huge um, in the sense that I mentioned this to our, our team uh, about the effort and focus she had. We had on the scouting report that they had a key shooter out there on the floor and that kid hit one three against us and it was on Taylor and I mean when I saw her slap her hands and get really mad about that I knew we were in business with her and just knowing that she was ready to play and just she came out and hit some big time shots so we're really really proud of how our seniors stepped up and played a great game out there on the floor. Uh, you got another young lady from Mobile, Jalen Snowden, uh, who really came up huge. That bench between Taylor and Jalen, 25 points off your bench. I mean, it's huge. If we can get that performance every night, it's great. But I knew Jalen, 
uh, it went down in the recruiting process to us in uh, Alabama State. So I kind of had it in me to know that she was going to come out. And I saw it and shoot around and I saw it leading up to the weekend practice, how focused she was. So the energy she came in and helped our team come out and transition, hitting some key threes to actually playing defense. And I'm on her all, to, all the time about playing defense. So I was really, really proud of her performance. Uh, four players in double figures, the other two, Algenice Gadsden and also Brittany. But then you look at it, your, uh, your leading scorer, I was not on that list of uh, in the double figures category. I think that's great. It's a great sign for us, and hopefully we can always have that balance attack and just know that I think teams are going to have a hard time trying to figure out which player to contain and shut yeah. down when you have that type of balance scoring. Yeah, a few teams are going to be able to shut down Jamie like Alabama State. She, she ended up with seven points, but uh, you know it, it all came up big, and so it turned into a big win for her. Definitely. Her rebounding helps us out tremendously. You know, that kid just has a knack of going and finding that ball and getting it out and, and, and again, scoring too as well. You shot it well, 49% from the field. Meanwhile, you hold them to 35% from the field. We talked about that, you know, Alabama State in the, in the, in the swag right now, conference-wise, is leading them, and they're holding people to shoot 36%, and we're at the bottom is shooting 44 or, or holding people to 44%. So we were able to switch that. So it was real proud of them. I tell you, when we did this was against Ole Miss, where we had made Ole Miss shoot 37% and we shot 44%. So it was good to see that. I've seen it done before, but consistently all throughout the course of the game, that was great. A huge homestand now with Southern coming to town and Alcorn State on Monday. A lot of teams jockeying for position near the midway point of league play. This is championship uh, week here. Um, you, you live for these moments and then the good thing about it is early so you got time to kind of fix some things for the next go around but this is what players just live for, sleep for, die for, want to be in these types of games so I'm excited for this week and looking forward to great basketball. Health of your basketball team, you've had a week off to kind of heal up some bruises and things, health of your basketball team. It, we're, we're good, we're all ready to go um, and knock on wood, let, let's, let's stay that way. Sure. Give me an idea now. Uh, you know, you got the homestand this weekend, then you make the Texas trip, you'll be at the halfway point. Uh, the schedule changes really after this weekend, seven of your last 11 on the road. So that, that makes this weekend even bigger in terms of what you're trying to accomplish. Well, in the beginning of the season and uh, of, of swag play and even thinking about non-conference, you want to protect your home court. So this is very, very important for us to finish strong. Yeah, really, you know, you're really close to being undefeated in league play, two really tough, tough close losses. Well, we talked about it as a staff and we talked it to our players. Five points yeah. uh, is the difference, but you know, we've learned in those games because we had an opportunity to go back and watch the end of the games and see the mistakes that we made. And now we're able to go back and say, play that game again on the second time around and hopefully we fix those things. A quick scouting report on your two opponents this weekend. Well, Southern, they got everybody coming back from SWAC tournament play. Uh, so they have two really good, talented guards out on the wing, and they got an exceptional post player who, against us, had 17 points and I believe 11 rebounds. So we got to do a good job of take, containing her and keeping her off the boards, and then we got to get in those shooters' face and make them beat us uh, over the, with our hands over them. Keys for your team. I mean, you talked about defense and defending the Southern's best players. Offensively, what do you do against them? We need to play together. We share the basketball, we push the ball in transition, and, we, and take care of the basketball. I can't say that's enough. I thought we did a really good job against Alabama State. Again, we got another test, take care of the basketball. They're going to try to take the ball away from Brittany, and other players are going to have to step up and handle the basketball, and, and handle it with poise. And Brittany has to step up, and I think this will be fun for her to play on that wing a little bit. Coach, thanks a lot. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Alabama a Basketball Review. We'll be right back. Hello, I am Pastor Troy. There are a lot of people hurting, hurting emotionally, hurting physically, hurting financially, family hurting, hurting spiritually, and there is no hurt like church hurt. If you are hurting, I got a prescription for you. Psalm 147 and three says, he healeth the broken in heart and binds up their wounds. If you are hurting, come to the Fellowship of Faith Church and experience the healing of Jesus. Brandon lights up the court every game. Soon, he'll do it as an electrical engineer. Jordan specializes in logistics and supply chain management on and off the field. Ashley's been schooling players at the net and student teaching in the classroom. Alabama A&M, four years of artistic, academic, and athletic discovery. We deliver the full university experience. Alabama A&M University, start here.
go anywhere. Welcome to the Union Hill Primitive Baptist Church, where we believe that our God-given vision is to be determined and steadfast in our commitment to proclaim the Word of God. Join us on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. for morning worship, and take advantage of our weekly Bible study options with studies on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m., Wednesdays at 12 p.m., or Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Once again, we welcome you to Union Hill Primitive Baptist Church, where our mission is proclaiming the gospel to the lost world producing mature disciples, and providing for the non-spiritual needs of the people. 90.9 WJAB-FM Huntsville. 100,000 watts, 24 hours a day. Smooth jazz and cool vocals. And the home of mellow madness till midnight. WJAB from the campus of Alabama A&M University. Welcome back to the Alabama A&M Basketball Review. The Bulldogs currently find themselves two games out of first place, Coach, as the weekend starts. Alabama State, Texas Southern lead at 5-0. Southern coming to town tonight, 5-1. Great opportunity for your team to knock them off tonight. Well, it's a perfect opportunity for us. You know, we're sitting in that fourth spot. You know, we let that Alabama State game slip from us. Could have moved us up to second, but you know, you got a tough Southern team coming in, you know, with us being at three and two, sitting at that fourth slot, you know, it can go out of the way. And this is going to be a tough weekend for us. Uh, we, get, we got to really play because Southern is a pretty good team. Uh, they got this, uh, Coach Banks' son who's playing for them. I think he's having around 10 points a game. Uh, Trey Lynch, who's coming off the bench, I think he's averaging 12. Then the Rogers kids. So they got three kids that are averaging double figure points. And those are the perimeter players. So, and they got two transfers, one young man from uh, Texas A&M, and then another young man that's from uh, uh, Florida State. Mm -hmm. So they got a pretty good balanced team. They're going to go inside out, and we just got to be ready for, 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 that, for the operation. Now, they lost some kids from last year's team, but they seem like to continue to stockpile talent. Well, you know, that's one of them, them, them schools that, you know, they seem to be able to get kids to come and sit out. Yeah. And, uh -huh. and that seems to be the trend right now, you know, try to get transfers to sit out. And that's, you know, what we did uh, to get ourselves in the position we are because we lost so much last year. Right. We had two kids sitting out, you know, which mm -hmm. is the Darius Tab, who was uh, junior college player of the year two years ago. And yeah. we was able to, to sit him out. And that's the trend to go right now. Yeah. Kids are not ready to play right then. You, you sit them out a year or you get a kid to transfer. And that seems to be the trend right now in the sweat. What are the keys for your team tonight? Well, the, the, the key is, you know, I, I, I kind of figure they're going to try to come out and try to rattle us, uh, Raquel or, or Marcus Mayweather at our point guard slot. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think Raquel and Marcus understood the situation that uh, we were in last, last week against Alabama State. And I think they're going to come out and they're going to redeem themselves for this game. Sure. Southern is a team, look, they've been really, really good since Banks took over that right. program. Right. Uh, now it's an opportunity for your team to kind of say, look, we're here, we're not going anywhere. And, and that's the thing, you know, each year we've gotten better. We're, we're moving, you know, slowly, slowly moving higher and higher. And that's what you want to do. You want your program to get better each and every year. And, uh, you know, feel pretty good about this team here. Young group, uh, no seniors, so we have everybody back next year. But I think we have a legitimate chance to still win this thing. Uh, we just got to go out there and put forth the effort uh, to, to try to win games. Uh, We'll celebrate uh, tonight with that win. Then we got to turn around and get ready for an Alcorn State team that's, you know, a very, very pesky kind of team. Yeah, that's Alcorn, one of them teams, you know, you can't really describe them. Yeah. The lucky kid, about 6'3", six, 6'4", six, mm -hmm. unorthodox, you know, mm -hmm. the thing about him, he gets to the free throw line. Mm -hmm. Not a great free throw shooter, not a great ball handler, yeah. not a great free throw shooter, but for some reason, he's always up in the top in every stat. Sure. You mm -hmm. know, he's just one of them. Them guys, you know, he's going to drop his head and go toward the basket. If you leave him out there, he's going hit to a, hit a jump shot and he's going to rebound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be a good matchup with him and Tab. I think they kind of got the same type of game. Yeah. You know, you don't have to run anything for those type of guys. Mm -hmm. They're just going to make stuff happen. Is he a senior? It seems like he's been around forever. No, he's just a thing. He's a, he's a junior. <laughs> Is that right? He's, he's okay. a junior. He's just been yeah. around. He's been playing since his freshman year. Yeah. You know, and I think Alcorn got lucky getting him. And then they also had a Vance kid, mm -hmm. a big, strong 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, six kid that you know, he's going to get a lot of offensive rebounds. Mm. And we just got to make sure we put our bite on these kids because they're, they're going to get in there and, and do the dirty work. You mentioned earlier about Nick, so it'll be a game time decision for him tonight. Uh, if, if he can't go, you, you, you look at maybe holding him out so he can go back on Monday? Uh, that's, you know, that's still up in there uh, according to how Nick's tolerance level is right now. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going through a lot of pain right now. Um, he wants to play, but we got to look at the long haul of the season. Yeah, right. You know, is it worth 
him playing one or two games now and then he's still hurt. So that's something we just got to sit down and it's going to be a game time decision for us to see do we take that chance or do we hold him out and just look at the rest of the season. If, uh, if he can't go, how does that change your, your plans in terms of your starting lineup and your rotation after that? Uh, it hurts your rotation because, you know, you had Adrian Elkwood coming off the bench uh, that gave you that energy, very 6'4", six, 6'5", six, athletic kid, mm -hmm. can jump out of the gym. Yeah. Uh, we're probably going to implement him into the starting lineup with him and Ladarius. You got two athletic wing guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's going to, you know, help the beginning of the game, but we just got to come up with someone else uh, coming off that bench for us. Yeah. Who do you look to? I mean, let's say this is, you got, you got experience with the guard spots, so you'll look at some other kids maybe kind of help carry that load. Yeah, look at Byron Houston, who, who uh, against Alabama State, rebounded well. Mm -hmm. uh, a great shooter. He didn't shoot well against Alabama State, but he's known for hitting some shots. So yeah. we expect him to step up. We expect Tyler to step up again, and, and him and Justin Cobb, I think they will give us uh, some, some good punches. So we're expecting everybody to step up. It's just not one or two people. Everybody got to step their role up a little bit. Uh, this team seems like it's played better when the bench has been a significant part of the whole thing. And, and that's a good thing, you know, when, you, when you're able to go to your bench and bring five more people in. We're not, we're not Kentucky now. We don't have those type <laughs> players. But, you know, when, you, when you're able to look down the bench and bring two or three, four guys in, the rest yeah. guys, and, and they hold a four, you know, that, that's good. And that's what they got to continue to do. We got one or two other kids that haven't played much. Now is the opportunity to step up and, and get some playing time. You giving any thought to, to what your pregame speech might be tonight? Uh, you know, just play inspired basketball. Yeah. You know, you got to, things that are going on, you got to let it play through you. You, you got to play it through you. We got to go out there and do the things that needs to get done. Uh, you know, we started this thing back in, in August because there's a bunch of new kids here, and we just got to continue to do what we've been doing. I know you want, you want this place to be packed. I mean, your, your crowd has to be here, and they got to be a factor. They got to be a factor because Southern, you know, they're a well-coached team, a well-balanced team. Uh, they're going to go inside out first. And, you know, the thing with Southern, you know, making those runs. They're going to continue. They're going to stay steady. They're going to stay within his, his, his system. And we just got to stay within our system, continue to do what we do. True. Coach, good luck tonight. Thank you, Reggie. Thanks for watching the Alabama A&M Basketball Review. I'm Reggie Benson. See you next week.